the Royal Air Force Mountain Rescue Association. Now this description of the parade can't obviously include everybody, sometimes they're just one or two people marching. But this is the Federation of Polish Armed Forces Association, who played a vital role as pilots in the Battle of Britain, and particularly at the Battle of Monte Cassino, and followed by the Hong Kong ex servicemen's Association. first time that we've actually had cameras right in the thick of it like this and that we've been allowed so close to to the march past and the atmosphere is is wonderful really in many senses I mean these people have come together they are sharing stories they're enjoying it in a way aren't they yeah, I think there's there's two things there's a solemn aspect of remembrance which we've had at the service and I think what we're seeing now is a sort of more of a celebration of lives remembered of, of good times obviously that all these guys have shared together um, you know there are hip flasks being passed among the back everyone's sort of fooling around behind us and I think that taps into the kind of idea of comradeship and, and camaraderie which is so key to anyone who's, who's served in the armed forces. And so many people from across so many different generations marching together as well. Well I think that that for me is, is, is the main thing. I think this is the first time there's ever been a Remembrance Day where there hasn't been a veteran of the First World War. Um, and that's a huge difference. The fact that we've got 19 year olds marching alongside 70 year olds. Um, I've just bumped into somebody in one of the crowds who served in the same company uh, of the First Battalion Grenadiers, uh, 34 40 years ago that I served in a year ago and, and everybody has that kind of common heritage so there is a real sense of history. Patrick, thank you. The South Atlantic Med Medal Association, uh, leading the contingent John Phillips, who was a bomb disposal expert, lost an arm defusing a bomb on board HMS Antelope and with that group Major General Julian Thompson who headed the operation in the Falklands. Canadian Veterans Association, Rolf Monteith among them. There he is on the right, who we heard talking about this. He's come almost every year for 20 years. I don't know whether we'll be able to see them, but the War Widows Association I hear this morning, and they have a new award, the Elizabeth Cross, which was given to the next of kin of those killed in war, worn on, I think there is one, it's on the right shoulder, just a little bit to the right, there's a, a silver, it's a silver cross, and it has the name of the family member who was killed in it. The War Widows are followed by the Queen's Alexandra Royal Army Nursing Corps, the British Nuclear Test Veterans Association, and SAFA, Soldiers, Sailors, Airmen and Families Association, who, who give help to those wounded and recovering, particularly at Headley Court, the Rehabilitation Centre in Sussex. And now, led by Major General Andrew Keeling, St. Dunstan's, the organization to look after those blinded in war. And they are split into three groups, the World War II column and then those blinded after World War II. 
Harry Henson at the front there, and his son Michael. Dennis Rapp, Wallace Bernard Smith, escorted by Peter de la Bilia, who commanded British forces during the Gulf War. Fly Navy 100 now, the All the various arms of the fleet air arm. The Aircraft Handlers Association first to carry out flight deck operations on board carriers. The telegraphists flew in the rear seats of aircraft from aircraft carriers. The Royal Naval Air Crews Association, the Fleet Air Armourers Association, who give firepower and air cover to Atlantic convoys responsible for the guns and the bombs and the missiles and the torpedoes. The Fleet Air Arm Association could have been in any of the various specializations. Fleet Air Arm Buccaneer Associations, the Buccaneer Aircraft, which uh, was flown in a, as a strike aircraft in Indonesia during the conflict in Borneo. The Fleet Air Arm Field Gun Association. They used to take part in the competitions to build and dismantle a field gun, which have now been abandoned. As a, a sign of naval skill on the grounds of people, or Air Force skill, they don't any longer use the field guns and they don't dismantle them. Fleet Air Arm Officers Association is there, pilot observers, air traffic controllers, meteorologists, you name it. Among them, Captain Hackett, who made over 500 deck landings flying buccaneers. Now, the Royal Navy, the Corvettes, and the Sea Harriers, the Tun class ships, the Benevolent Trust, and the Submariners Association here. Submariners, the most mysterious life of all members of the Royal Navy, a very special group of people. When submarines were first invented, there was a, an international appeal to treat submarines as pirate vessels in wartime because people were so unused to what they thought of as an underhand, unfair, and damned un-English way of fighting. Well, they proved their worth in the Second World War, and now, of course, carry Britain's nuclear deterrent. It's the 60th anniversary of the Yangtze incident, when HMS Amethyst, London, Black Swan, and Concert were all involved in that famous escape by Amethyst down the Yangtze River, and they're here. The Russian Convoy Club, averaged age 86, wearing their white berries, who escorted or helped escort supplies to Russia. The Merchant Navy Association, Vivian Foster leading it. The Merchant Navy Association, which lost many lives, 32,000 lives lost in the Second War. Alexandra's Royal Naval Nursing Service Association. They're followed by the Voluntary Aid Detachment Royal Naval Association, the HMS Andromeda Association, the underclass frigates. A great mixture 